Hello everyone, this is Winter here at Sonic Academy and welcome back for another series of tech tips. In the following videos, we're going to be discussing interesting ways of approaching audio material in Ableton Live. We're going to be using a combination of audio samplers, extreme audio editing and time stretching in the sequencer to create a variety of interesting and textured sounds. The focus, however, isn't going to be just on creating really big ambiences or atonal sounds. We're going to be focusing on creating interesting, playable melodic instruments that you can actually use in modern electronic music productions. So in this video, I'm going to be first talking a little bit about how I like to approach audio and resampling. And then in the following tech tips, I'm going to be showing off how to design actual patches. So what I like to do is intentionally create audio artifacts from time stretching and pitch shifting in my audio, and then use those artifacts to create interesting and textured synth sounds. So to show off what I'm talking about, I'm actually going to be using the Sonic Academy Anna synthesizer as an audio sampler, and we're going to be using the time stretching algorithm within this to create some interesting distortions and overtones to show you what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and open up an instance of Sonic Academy's Anna. And I can go ahead and reset this real quick. Um, it's on its, I have the patch loaded up here so we can go ahead and reset everything. So just hit initialize. And then we'll turn down the wavetable oscillator because we don't want to hear any of the waveform. And then we're going to load in an audio sample into the audio sample section. So we can click on this waveform and we're going to scroll down to chimes number one. And we're going to load that into the sampler device here. And now I'm also going to high pass this so we can cut out some of those low bass frequencies. Then we're going to adjust the start point so that it lines up with this transient here. We're also going to adjust the end point as well. So it just plays this one little clip. Oh, and actually, before we do this, I'll show you what this sample sounds like whenever I press a C key on my keyboard. So it's just a really nice bell sound. But we can adjust that loop endpoint to the very end here. And the start point as well. So, so far it sounds like this. So it's just a really fast loop on one individual bell hit of that whole section. And whenever I start time stretching this, whenever I go down about three octaves on my keyboard, you start to hear some overtones and artifacts in the top end of that signal. When I turn the pitch down even farther, you can hear this effect become a little bit more pronounced. So you have that weird pitch variation happening at the very beginning of the sound, and then almost that redux bit crush sound on top of everything. And that's just the artifacts that the time stretching algorithm inside of Anna is doing, is creating whatever it's pitch shifting our sound that much. Another thing we can do that produces an interesting sound as well is turn up this crossfade just a little bit. So it's gonna crossfade the sample whenever it loops back on itself. And this will actually start looping those glitches that are happening in our audio. So now we've taken our sound, pitch shifted it down quite a bit, and we're also looping those audio artifacts that are happening at the very end, just giving us an interesting glitchy tonality. And this on its most basic level is how I like to approach audio sampler. I like to use extreme time stretching to create all sorts of interesting artifacts, and then whenever I play them back on a sampler, I can create all these interesting and different tones out of my audio material. Another way that we can use artifacting to our advantage is by time stretching an Ableton Live sequencer. So what I have here is a vocal sample, which in a future video will be turning into a nice vocal pad. But for now, it just sounds like this. So it's just a vocal sample I recorded of myself and then heavily auto-tuned. So you can see there's lots of noise in the background of this, and it's also kind of got some interesting pitch variation going on because I didn't really sing on tune for this specific example. But what we can do is extreme time stretch this to get some interesting artifacts in our audio. What we'll do is time stretch this audio all the way until it can't be time stretched anymore. And then we're gonna turn this to the complex pro mode and then we're going to turn off high quality. So now whenever we play this back in the sequencer, listen to the top end of the audio signal, and you'll hear that there's all these glitches and textures happening in the top end of our audio. So 
So especially in this part right here, you can hear those glitches. And this type of extreme time stretching can create some really interesting effects, as I'll show later in the future videos, whenever you start to intentionally use this whenever you're designing patches. So just for example, if we went and pitched this down two octaves, so negative 24 semitones, it has a really nice, interesting tone to it. So because of all that extreme time stretching, it takes on a whole different character. And this is kind of the general technique that we'll be using throughout the next series of tech tips to create some really cool and unique patches. This type of time stretching with the warp mode inside Ableton is also available inside the simpler instrument device. So you can actually use this to create some interesting playable patches, which we'll show in the future videos. So that's all for this first video. This is just a quick tech tip on using time stretching and samplers to cause distortion and texture in your audio. And join me in the next video, and we'll start to talk about what this looks like in context of designing an actual patch. Thanks, and I'll see you there. Thanks, everybody, for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.